Welcome back, dear viewers, and you're still watching the breakfast show. And in this segment of our program, we will talk about the developing villages in Egypt as according to directives of President Afet Hassisi. And today we are joined over the phone by Dr. Zainab Nawar, Professor of Economics. Good morning. Good morning, my dear. So, uh, Dr. Zainab, uh, how do you see uh, this initiative by President Afatih Sisi to develop uh, 1,500 villages in Egypt in the coming period? What I see this initiative as a, as a great initiative, actually, uh, in dealing with the poverty problems in Egypt, especially when we talk about the poor villages, mm. uh, especially the satellite villages, uh, along Egypt and along the different governor rates. Hmm. So um, the initiative is covering a lot of um, and different and multi uh, services to be provided to the people in to the Egyptians, of course, in the uh, satellite and the villages, uh, starting by providing them with infrastructure projects, uh, roads between uh, villages, um, uh, drinking water, sanitation, um, uh, educational and health. Uh, services and also supporting uh, the local uh, or local development units. So uh, the initiative is so great in, in achieving uh, what we see that in a new vision and a new future for, for those people in the, the poor villages in Egypt. So uh, Dr. Zainab, how do you think uh, this development is going uh, to change uh, people's living conditions in the villages? Uh, of course, it will it, it will change their uh, live, uh, their conditions and their standard of living a lot because if, if you talk about uh, the poor uh, villages here in Egypt, um, starting from the projects of the road projects and how we, the the initiative is going to do a lot of pavement of the roads between the different villages and this is very important to the movement of. Uh, people and the movement of goods because sometimes accidents used to happen uh, because of uh, the lacking of a paving uh, uh, road. Uh, this is number one. Uh, number two, also the sanitation and uh, the drinking water uh, uh, services. We, we, we wouldn't dream that one day in Egypt in, in one of the very poor uh, villages there will be a sanitation, you know, I, I used to be in Suhag uh, a few months ago and I saw this type of uh, project and, and you can imagine how this will change the future, how this will change the economic development and also will bring a lot of opportunities for the poor in, in Egypt, especially if we're going to talk about health and educational services also to be provided for them. Because some of the poor, they, they, they would need an enhancement for uh, the health and the services that we provided to them in poor areas and also educational services that are being provided to them. Of course, this will achieve a lot in terms of increasing their standard of living and achieving a shift uh, in their future and fighting the poverty. So, say, what are the challenges uh, that are expected uh, to face uh, the government uh, when uh, 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 implementing this initiative? Of course, one of the challenges that will be, um, what, uh, what I say is, is the part of uh, knowing and determining the actual needs of, uh, of people in these uh, poor villages. This is one of the challenges things because one of the, uh, one of the pillars in, in one of the uh, activities of the initiative uh, is to know and to determine the actual needs of the poor people in poor villages and try to yes. uh, solve and provide them with the... Of course, this will not be an easy task or an easy job to determine the actual needs and to providing them with the suitable services. Also, job creation is a very important pillar and should be considered seriously uh, because one of the things that we are witnessing here in Egypt, and this is one of the problems that uh, people used to migrate, Egyptians used to migrate from villages and coming here to Cairo. Yes. So there should be projects to be uh, developed to them in their places and in their villages so uh, we can avoid this type of uh, mi migration from these two villages coming into Cairo. So um, this is the two challenges of the thing, is how to determine the actual needs and how to work on raising their standard of living by providing them the suitable uh, uh, opportunities for jobs. 
So, uh, do you think, uh, Dr. Zena, that this is part of Decent Life Initiative, right? It is not a different initiative. Yes, it's part of, um, uh, it's, uh, we can consider it as phase two from the initiative Haya Karima. Yes. Yeah, this, is, this comes under the umbrella of Haya Karima. Yes. And then you think about this second phase that, and, and this is what I actually am I'm, I'm fully happy about it. Hmm. But it will cover these satellite villages. Not only that, we are going to cover the main villages or the mother villages as we as we are calling. It, no, it will cover the satellite and the most poor poorer areas in the poorer areas in Egypt, going deep down into the Egyptian society, mm. uh, into the poor villages. This is what what is actually new about it, and also the uh, the scope and the scale that this initiative will cover. Uh, reaching uh, these areas and reaching uh, those people in depth of mm. Egypt, which is very important. Also, uh, Dr. Zainab, the Minister of Planning and Economic Development, uh, Halal Saeed, announced the launch of electronic system to support this initiative to identify the development needs of the low-income uh, Egyptian villages targeted uh, in the initiative. So to what extent this move will help in supporting and detecting uh, those really in need? Of course, because of the scale and the scope of the initiative, you cannot work using uh, the, uh, the traditional yes. ways of determining the poor mm. that should be. We, we should be using an electronic and more technological and advanced system to track the poor and also to track the advancement that is happening to their uh, standard of living. And this is part of the evaluation, mm. the economic evaluation of, of any uh, initiative and of any program. So I'm, I'm truly happy about the implementation of this because it, it is very important and it is impossible uh, and under no way uh, and that you can uh, evaluate or you can track the advancement without the, without the use of technology and the ad, and, and the advanced and technological system. So this is very good, of course. Yes. So uh, how do you see the role of NGOs and civil society organization in this initiative and their cooperation with the government in implementing the initiative? Um, the, the role and the importance of the NGOs, if you are talking about the serious NGOs especially, that uh, the NGOs that are working mm. in governorate and working in, uh, in, in also in poor villages, that the NGOs actually, um, those people are living uh, with the poor in these poor village, villages. So they know their needs. So of course, if, yes. they, they, if the government are going to work with serious NGOs, of course the government can benefit a lot from these NGOs in terms of knowing from these NGOs what actually the the needs of, of the people, what, what are their needs in terms of projects, and, and also the implementation of these projects. So the NGOs can have a great role in uh, supporting and helping the government in determining the, need, the determining the needs and also in the implementation, and knowing also uh, what the people actually uh, need, and also to help the government to track the advancement. So the NGOs is a very important tool and it should be used uh, uh, properly because it's a chance for the Egyptian government to use these NGOs, especially uh, in poor villages. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Zainab, also, uh, if we talk about investments and to what extent uh, uh, developing uh, these rural areas and uh, Egypt's countryside also uh, will help in attracting more investors to Egypt. Of course, uh, this is taking place uh, in parallel with the developing infrastructure and uh, uh, providing investors with facilities. So how do you see uh, this initiative and to what extent it will help in uh, attracting investors? Um, uh, by all means, when you, when you just raise the standard of living of, uh, of the poor villages on, uh, in Egypt, uh, this is very important because you are achieving a chip for these people's mm. lives, their people's future, and their people also, uh, what we can see, that you are doing a change to the whole of their, yes. of their life. Um, talking about investment, I, I, I have a different point of view in this because I see that if we are talking about investment, so um, um, uh, the foreign investors, yes. maybe they will invest in industrial zones that are in government rate. But they will, if we talk about Egyptian villages, it's the local investors. Hmm. And it's the, the small and medium enterprises that you can uh, work on further enhancement of this scale uh, uh, in these small villages. So 
if you are going to develop these small villages, definitely you will bring the local investors. And definitely uh, it's important also to work on a project that is proper to the villages and these rural areas and to enhance the small and medium enterprises, the Egyptian small and medium enterprises. Yes. So as a professor of uh, economics, uh, can you tell us uh, your opinion on uh, the central bank uh, decision to lower interest rates and what does uh, this uh, as a step or move tell us about the status of the economy? Um, of course, lowering the interest rate, it, uh, it, it brings uh, uh, new opportunities because this will uh, enhance and encourage yes. people to put their money in different projects. And this is what we would like people to do. We want people to do an investment in different tools rather than mm -hmm. just putting their money in banks and getting uh, uh, interest rate and, uh, out of this. We want uh, money to be pumped into mm. the Egyptian market. We want people to be enhanced to create new projects. Uh, uh, talk about small or medium uh, projects, uh, small or medium enterprises. So all of this is a way to deal with the crisis now and to lessen the effect of this crisis on the Egyptian economy. So uh, also if we uh, talk about uh, international uh, opinions on uh, uh, on, on reports on the performance of the Egyptian economy at uh, this stage. So how do you read these reports? Uh, actually, I, I recently I just had read a lot, a lot of reports. Uh, I, I, I saw the report of, uh, of the World Bank. They still maintain uh, our uh, GDP growth at a, at a certain positive level. Uh, also, we have the new IMF uh, report mm. uh, issue that is talking about uh, how the Egyptian economy is solid in dealing with the uh, crisis. Um, and of course, um, from readings of, of this report, this, is, this, this gives a good message about the Egyptian economy, especially that this report, they talk about different countries in different uh, places at the world, where different countries actually are suffering because of COVID-19. But here in Egypt, uh, dealing with the crisis and because of what the government had done and different packages and different uh, uh, stimulus packages and different policies and all of this had lessened the effect of the crisis on the Egyptian economy. So um, I'm, I'm truly happy about what I'm reading and every once in, uh, every once in a year, when I'm just reading an international uh, report issued from an international uh, institution, I see they, all, they also make the same comment about uh, the, our economy, which is good, which is good uh, indicator for us. So uh, also, uh, Dr. Zainab, President of Fatah Sisi, have always pointed to population growth and to what extent uh, it is affecting uh, the uh, economy and uh, also affecting development. So uh, how do you see this? Um, about the population growth, it, it, it's actually a challenging uh, uh, issue here in Egypt, um, especially if we talk about the GDP growth that, we, that should be more than the increase of the number of population. But I do see that the, 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 the recent initiatives and the recent programs dealing with poverty, providing civil mm. uh, uh, services, providing uh, education, of course, we, we need more in terms of education and health services. This all will, 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 say will formulate a new future for Egypt and will deal with the increase in population because if you, uh, as a government, uh, the government is, is smart enough to provide the population with the proper education and the proper health services, definitely uh, we can uh, benefit from this increase in the number of population. But it's still a challenge some, uh, some, to some extent. But I see that the, uh, the initiatives and the programs by the President of Fatah Sisi, all of these initiatives is trying to deal with the problems and the poverty issues and the increasing the production in different uh, sectors, and all of this will uh, lessen from the effect of the increase in, in population and will make a proper use from the Egyptians. Yes. Also, uh, Dr. Uh, Zainab, uh, we can't ignore the role of SMEs and uh, engaging uh, youths in uh, development and providing them with, uh, uh, with enterprises. So how do you see the role of SMEs in, uh, in uh, the development of the economy? Of course, this, uh, the role of the SMEs is very important in developing the economy because you are creating jobs 
uh, if we talk about the startups and the innovative uh, yes. uh, uh, small and medium enterprises and how that uh, if you just encouraging this scale uh, of small and medium enterprises so by the time these small and medium enterprises will grow and be a giant uh, companies one day and will be able to, ex to do uh, an exploitation out mm. there. So it, it's all different initiatives actually for the small and medium enterprises. I'm, I'm so happy because recently and because of the issuance of the new law, which is the 152 in the year 2020, would have given a lot of incentives and a lot of means to encourage this uh, type of projects in Egypt. So um, when you encourage the small and medium enterprises, you are dealing with the unemployment uh, problem. You are decreasing unemployment, uh, creating jobs, creating more innovation, uh, depending on the local products instead of just importing from out there, uh, increasing the exportation, increasing productivity. Yes, uh, finally, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Zainab Nawar, Professor of uh, Economics. Uh, thank you for this precious information and uh, give viewers a short break. And uh, we'll be back with our second segment for today, so stay tuned.